Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. You like soft blow hammers, dead blow hammers, things like that? Well, you're, today's your lucky day. Let's go through it. Now, the first soft blow hammers actually were wood, and they were all different types. Some were primitive, like this one here. This one my friend used to call my uh, Jesus hammer. This was my great grandfather's, and uh, this is a really hard wood, like a, I guess like a ligman vitae or something. And uh, he, this thing must be over 120 years old or so. But any kind of wood hammer, uh, they're great because what happens is they take the brunt of the punishment. So the only problem is that they do get damaged after a while. So you look for something that has uh, good properties, something that's quite hard, but something that's not going to. Uh, be too hard to work with. Um, here's a really nice, these were two by fours I picked up years ago at, uh, I don't know where, like a National Harbor, uh, National Wholesale Liquidator, I think. And if you look here at the, uh, the growth rings, I counted on this piece of uh, two by four alone, I counted over 79 growth rings. So this tree had to be a hundred and something years old. Looks like Douglas fir. Fantastic, uh, design for a dead blow, uh, for a, uh, a lightweight hammer, very light, soft blow, and but any type of wooden hammer. The only thing is, I never understood why people like these hammers. You know, they make them like this. You see artists use them and whatnot. I think they're the worst. First of all, it gives you a curved surface. So unless you are dead on whatever you're hitting, you're going to have a glancing blow. So these are easy to make on the lathe, but I think they're garbage. So. I don't know why people like these hammers, but anything here with a flat face, a good, some, if you're using something that, you know, for like uh, timber framing or something, you want a little bit heavier weight, but if you want something lightweight, just to nudge something on for cabinet making, these are great. Okay, our second category of hammers is the rubber hammer. Uh, this, I have to say, was the first soft blow hammer that I ever used was a rubber hammer. And my dad actually bought me this years ago because I was dinging up the hubcaps when I was putting back on my hubcaps of the car. You know, you would try and be gentle with a hammer, but you would always put... So these were great for that. The problem is with some of these hammers, uh, the rubber ones, is they can leave a mar or a scuff on your product. Also, they have a lot of bounce back into it. This is a dedicated hubcap tool. This has your little hammer on it and your pry to get it off. Hubcaps are going, I guess I'm, I'm really re revealing my age. Um, here's a, uh, a rubber ended hammer. This is uh, quite common on a lot of things, but again, rubber can be a problem. It can get brittle. It uh, can harden up over time. So uh, rubber had its problem. Now, once manufacturers realized that there was a market for soft blow hammers for different ones, they started flooding the market with different types of hammers. Um, you had This is a heavy duty where you have a lot of weight to it. You had interchangeable heads. These are polyethylene uh, or polypropylene maybe. I don't know, but uh, they also came in rawhide. They have a whole bunch of interchangeable changeable heads that you could put on different weights here's an aluminum one so it's not so heavy you get a longer and quicker swing on it uh the obviously a craftsman two two face hammers that had interchangeable these were solid but they had a lot that had interchangeable tips that you could screw off and replace the tips if they don't screw off and you can't replace the tips then these things are pretty much throwaway because when they get all mashed up they're not very attractive to look at uh nupla makes a lot of uh interchangeable tips and you got to be careful because the type of uh, whatever hammer you get you want to make sure that the tips are readily available and not so expensive I mean why pay $15 for a, a set of tips when you can get a, a new hammer for the same price so um, here's a, uh, a a ram set hammer this is a, a shore drive and this was made like for machinists and things like that. This has, uh, they had a whole bunch of different heads that you can get, different durometers, different, uh, different tensions that you can use. And uh, it also has a floating head inside. So it's a double soft blow hammer. And uh, like I said, the manufacturers went nuts with making all these hammers that you can uh, get the specific one for your needs. Another class are rawhide hammers. Now, uh, a lot of them had the interchangeable heads that you can re unscrew this, put new rawhide uh, heads in. These are great because uh, they are very non-marring and they don't leave marks and uh, they are quite soft yet hard enough to do the job. The problem is they mushroom out after a while and, and uh, you could see what happens years ago. People would just cut off a section, you know, using a bandsaw or something. When it got too mushroomed out, they cut off a section, and this way you're back to uh, fresh rawhide. 
but um, these are, unfortunately, if you use them a lot, you'll go through quite a bit. Here's a nice floor hammer that has a rawhide section on one side and a nice copper section on another and a nice weight to it. It's more like a machinist hammer. And here, uh, another type of soft blow hammer. Here's a, a copper faced hammer. They used to have non-sparking bronze and also copper that uh, for using for metal work that will uh, give you an, a little bit extra weight and conforming so it will not slip off because this will dent a little bit as you're, as you're hitting something and it won't fly off and slip off. Another class of hammer we have is called a dead blow hammer and what it is it's basically a, uh, a polyethylene or polypropylene outside exterior and it's filled you could hear it with shot usually lead shot and or steel shot and what happens is when you hit something it doesn't bounce back. These things are fantastic. This was a game changer, a game changer. and uh, they came out. Uh, they became popular about 20 years ago. But uh, forget it. Everybody, if you don't have one of these, you have to get at least one or two in different sizes. They come in different weights. A small one. Uh, you can get a larger one. You know, here's a, pretty much about the heaviest you get. Um, this one here is a four pounder, but they actually make sledgehammers with these, which is amazing. Uh, here's an S-Wing that I bought, and um, this one here, it's a, it's a slightly different uh, uh, make. It's a harder plastic that they use, or polyethylene or whatever, but it was very difficult for me to get one that didn't have... Uh, messed up seam lines on it. You know, I was, I even wrote to the company. Uh, one of them, I sent them a picture of one that I bought this through, uh, through the mail. And what happened was it came and it was all messed up. So, uh, I had to return it to get a decent one. But so you have to look them over. But, uh, the Pittsburgh, the cheap ones, they work fantastic. I know guys that use these all day and they buy them and throw them away, you know. But for the average homeowner, that's all you're going to need. They're great dead blow and soft blow at the same okay, time. Okay, one thing is uh, I'm a punch fanatic. You know, I have a lot of punches and all my punches are in fantastic shape because if they're not, I take them over to the grinder and I straighten them out before I put them into my case. And every one of these have beautiful heads on them. They're not mushroomed. They're not chipping or anything. And why? Because I use a dedicated punch hammer made of brass. I got this one off uh, Amazon. It's a Tecton. Fiberglass. I've been using this for years. It's great. It don't. Uh, again, it'll take. This will take the beat, and you won't mess up your punches. Dedicated brass punch hammer. If you don't have one, great thing to have. Okay. Last but not least, a couple of my favorites. And uh, first of all, this one here. This is called a uh, a sorbethane. It's a, a different type of of, of material. And you can see it's great for really fine materials like glass and everything like that. Look at this. Look at the softness of this. You could squeeze it. You see what I mean? And it has some good weight to it. So you have the momentum, but you can hit anything with this and it'll just take form to whatever you're hitting. Very interesting hammer. So I, I had to have it because I enjoy uh, <laughs> these type of hammers. Uh, and these are my favorites. These are simplex uh, hammers. And if you ever look these up on YouTube, these are just amazing how these things are put together. You can get all types of tips on them. Uh, they're just a work of art. You know, to change the tip, you just unscrew here. The tips pop right out. You put it in. But uh, look at that. That's just a piece of art, you know. And uh, this is something I would use, you know, maybe if I'm doing some, you know, if you're doing like gunsmithing or something like that. And you just want to have a dedicated hammer for something really nice to look at and enjoy. Anyway. That's uh, an intro to some soft blow hammers. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care and have a nice day.